Welcome to Amidon Planet. I'm your host, Joel Amidon. Thank you for joining me in this Never Any Quest to Learn How to Teach Better. Today on episode 110 of the podcast, we have friend, mentor, longtime educator, Cliff Thompson. Uh, Cliff is a legend in Sauk Prairie, Wisconsin, where I first started to teach high school mathematics. He was there as activities director uh, when I was uh, just, again, trying to figure out what the heck I was doing in the classroom and is a big part of my growth and development as a teacher, as a leader, uh, as <laughs> even as a coach, and just as a parent. Uh, there's a lot there. And as you get to hear this conversation, you're going to understand that Cliff is a, is a special human being and so glad he's been willing to come on the podcast and share some of his time and expertise and, and again, enthusiasm. But also, we had a chance to figure out something to talk about. I mean, it would have been enough just to have Cliff come on and, and just share some of his experiences in education, which you, you will hear in the, in the conversation. But I also say, hey, would you want to talk about a book? And he and I were both reading the same book, From Strength to Strength, uh, Arthur C. Brooks's book um, that's subtitled Finding Success, Happiness, and Deep Purpose in the Second Half of Life. And really, it's about you have this initial sort of thrust into your career where you have productivity and you're, you're at the top of your game, but that only lasts for so long. So what do you do with the rest of it? Right. And Arthur Brooks talks about this like idea of a second curve, this idea of having, you know, the initial sort of thrust, but then, all right, what do you do to prolong your influence within what you're doing? And, and that's where it gets into this idea of crystallized intelligence versus fluid intelligence. And anyway, there's more in the book that you can g- grab onto. But basically, thinking about investing in others is a way that you can prolong uh, your, your heights, right? Uh, and keep on going, right? You're not always going to be the leader. <laughs> so, and so thinking about how do you become uh, the investor in others? And so that's what the book is about. And Really, that's kind of like what Cliff Thompson is about. And so excited, again, for uh, to share the conversation, to be able to have him on and to talk about this book, talk about his career, and uh, let's, let's just get into it. Let's get into it. So as always, just know that we will not be able to communicate the whole value of the book, and even if we did, it would be from our perspective. If, in other words, if you like what you hear, go get the book for yourself. So go to your local library, go to your local bookstore, pick it up, um, you will not be disappointed, especially if you're someone that's figuring out, well, what, what am I doing here? <laughs> if, you have, if you have that question, what am I doing here? Uh, go read this book. It, it's, it's got some great stuff for it. So no longer I'm going to delay. Let's get into it. Here's my conversation with Cliff Thompson. We're talking about Arthur C. Brooks's book, From Strength to Strength, Finding Success, Happiness, and Deep Purpose in the Second Half of Life. Cliff Thompson, welcome to Amazon Planet. How are you? I am fantastic. How are you, Joel? Oh, that, that's good. Oh, you know, the line was either it was a uh, it was ten to one. It was going to be like fantastic, but I had tremendous uh, that you would put a tremendous that you were tremendous uh, as uh, as the as the lead winner. So we had an underdog already. <laughs> All <out>. right. <laughs> well, I didn't. I don't want to overuse any of my phrases. So I was kind of saving <laughs> that. So thank you for calling me on that one. Oh my goodness! I was doing some math this morning, Cliff, and uh, it has been. 20 i started at sock prairie high school in 2002 so mm. it's been a long time a long almost 22 years since uh i was uh i got a chance to interact with you for the first time and was like who is this cliff thompson so who is this cliff Th- cliff could you give just a little bit of background on on who you are just a little bit of the venture that's taking you all the way to here to being in the saint john's library uh talking to me here for this podcast I, I am honored to do that. And please, I also want to catch back up with you. So yes. that's our that's our trade. OK, yeah, yeah. Um, well, we'll start with uh, March 10th. I turned 70 and um, Cindy and I are so grateful. Uh, we both are 70 and we are so grateful at our stages and ages of life that we had the experiences that we had. And we're so grateful as we prepare to be senior servants that we get to grow and improve and be with people like you who are role models and inspirations to us. Um, 
Bottom line, having the privilege to have served 43 years of active employment in yeah. education uh, in Milwaukee and Sauk Prairie. Uh, then um, the last years uh, beginning retirement, uh, we're just so thankful uh, that God has grown us and said, going to give you a pathway. Um, so the, the idea has been, we've had a lot of experiences in life and education. Uh, we do not claim, especially me to be experts, but so grateful that each step in each phase has provided the opportunity to work and serve with people like you, um, our three children are serving in education and absolutely love it. They have blessed us with four granddaughters. They're all within 70 miles. Um, so each day we get up and say, oh, my goodness, we have the privilege to support them in their journey and be able to be um, the parents and grandparents that we've been called to be. So hopefully that gives you a little update. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. So um, this is my now, uh, I think, shoot. I graduated in 2011. So this is like this. I'll be starting my what 13th year here at, at the University of Mississippi. Now a one, full professor, um, at one full year in that role and uh, coordinate our doctoral programs here. And so getting a chance to pay it forward, the investment that you've given to me in my mm -hmm. own uh, development as an educator. Now I get to do that with my own doctoral students and and future teachers that I get to interact with. So it's a, it's, it's a wonderful thing that we get to do here. You know, it's a, Thank it's a wonderful you day, that. right? Yeah. Thank you for that, my friend. I can feel the love you have for your work and for them. Yeah. Thank you. Well, and also, I, and I was thinking about my experience with you at Sauk Prairie High School. So I knew you as the activities director when I came in and I believe then you transitioned to be the principal out at, Oh shoot! It's where the ferry is. What's the school out? Um, uh, Merrimack was one of the placements. Yep. Yeah, Merrimack, and then eventually where, and then I think after I left, did you become the the district uh, administrator? Yes, I, I had the privilege to um, later in my career go to uh, go to Edgewood and enroll oh. in their doctoral program. And um, be able to write a dissertation on the public school superintendent. And that was part of a transformation in my life. So I had the opportunity to be superintendent, district administrator for seven years. And then my eighth year was a transition year uh, to support the present superintendent, Jeff Wright. Nice, nice. Well, uh, Dr. Thompson. I, I apologize. There we go. In the oh. South, we, we take our titles very seriously. Yes, but only <laughs> only to be able to honor others, my friends. So That's Cliff right. is great. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, well, and so Cliff, we, um, you know, thinking about some of the people that I've had on from Sock Rise, we've had Tom Andrews on um, and then having Shane Bean on a, a couple times. And knowing I wanted to, you know, you're such an amazing, anyone that's had interactions with you, like your personality and the way that you come across in your relationship building is like, okay, let's, let's see if we can get Cliff on, if he'd be interested to come on the podcast. And then, you know, saying like, Hey, sometimes there's books that, um, you, we'd like to talk about. And so we used fish, uh, to talk about fish with Tom Andrews. And then, uh, we talked about, uh, um, the pyramid of success, uh, with Shane Bean, uh, it's a classic book by Wooden. And then, so I said, Hey, do you have any books that you've been reading? And you threw out three of them. And one of them was Arthur Brooks from strength to strength, uh, finding success, happiness, and deep purpose in the second half of life. I've been reading that. And like, as well, it was on my, it was literally on my, on the side of my bed. Like it's something I've been reading and it was like, well, okay, this is meant to be, someone has a plan here. So, so wh why were you reading this book? Yeah. Thank you. Do you mind if I just segue with a, with a couple points Yeah, absolutely. Um, that, I, that I hope will be of benefit uh, yeah. to any of the, the family members that are joining us here? Um, when we, when we think about the privilege to serve, so back to Milwaukee days in 1977, oh, I was I was called to be um, a kindergarten teacher in the morning, 
seventh and eighth grade math and literacy uh, support teacher in the afternoon, as well as youth group director, athletic director, and coach of all activities. School uh, of a hundred precious, precious children. And um, one of those sports, um, all of the children were, were of uh, children of color, they were black. And I knew very little uh, about basketball. And uh, I, t and by the way, because we were such a small school, we had from second grade to eighth grade on our basketball team. Oh wow! And some of those little <laughs> second graders were just precious. They had been playing since uh, they were walking, right? So yeah, it was yeah. beautiful. Anyhow, I'm in a gym. Oh, and by the way, the ceilings were 13 feet high, so. <laughs> um, we could practice our free throws at a lower level, yeah. uh, but really our arc. jump shot and all that worked. But yeah. I wrote a letter to John McLaughlin and John McLaughlin got back to me and said, I can't teach my rainbow jumper at the school, but I'm going to come visit and be an encouragement to you. So John McLaughlin was kind enough to come. And of course, our kids love the Milwaukee Bucks and that yeah. went well. Oh my well, during that, he said, well, I think it's really important that you meet another person who loves basketball equally to me, Rick Majerus, Marquette oh my University. Goodness. Yeah. So, uh, we were at a tournament and Rick, uh, being as he labeled himself a gym rat, showed up for one of our games and our kids knew he was there and said, coach, we got to play well today. Because Coach Majerus <laughs> is here. And wouldn't it be great if someday we get to play for Marquette University. Oh so anyhow, goodness, we yeah. played. And after the game, Rick said, I love your energy. I love your passion for the game for these kids. Well, Cliff, you are a weak basketball coach. <laughs> you know, limited amounts. Your, your pressure on the ball was average good, but your help defense and your understanding of spacing and things like that needs a lot of work. May I teach you about the game? Oh my goodness! And I, wow. I, I did not have an understanding of the gift of that um, ability to be taught by a person. By here's two tremendous Milwaukeeans, right? Yeah, yeah. Touching people's lives, and Rick allowed me. He came to some of our practices. He invited me to Marquette practices. He invited me to lunches and taught me the game. Wow. And it was so incredible that I really got to see that Rick and John McLaughlin were examples of that for the remainder of my life, mm -hmm. I would be given opportunities to be able to grow and learn and serve undeserved, but greatly appreciated. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I, I didn't. So I, I just knew the one part. I, I just thought it was a brief interaction. I didn't know how extensive that relationship was between you. Oh my, what a, what a gift. What a gift. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And um, I thank you that we could share that because Rick passed yeah. um, later on in our friendship. And I, I can remember one of his last words were, I will always remember your willingness to grow and learn. It's not about where you start. It's about where you go. And mm. thank you, Coach Majerus, from the bottom of my heart. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And I want to thank John McLaughlin because then we'll carry this on. I developed a relationship with uh, the MAC Fund, the mm. Midwest Athletes Against Children's Cancer. Yeah. And John McLaughlin and John Carey, the executive director at that time, came to Holy Ghost um, Elementary School and we ran a basketball camp. And we gave $50 to the MACFUD. And we were so proud and so gr great to be a part of their team. And that camp continued for years where coaches donated their time and children in Milwaukee were touched mm -hmm. by the purpose of the camp and the opportunity to grow in knowledge and wisdom in basketball. Yeah. So another little story. Yeah, of yeah. Beginning. That's tremendous. Yeah. Uh, I you and and if I may attach that, because hopefully this will fit for you, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then the opportunity to work with Tom Andrews and Sock Prairie. So after being at Holy Ghost for um, two years, 
uh, Milwaukee Lutheran High School had a religion opening, and I was fortunate to be receive a teaching position there for one year. And then at 26, the principal said, I would like you to be our first activities director. And my age was so limited, my abilities, I had limited understanding in the arts. Mm -hmm. But what he said was, I will grow you and shape you. Teach us how to compete with class, with character, and as a family of activities. Ken Elwine name and what a gift it was to be able to do that and then coach and then actually later be able to to coach basketball at the same that was they had a thousand students at that time and what a what a another gift but see someone grabbed me by the hand and said i'm going to give you an opportunity to grow and learn and then we'll just quickly transition that to tom andrews yeah. tom and i were working dick bennett's basketball camp and um, Tom helped me so much to grow as a person. I had the passion, the energy, the desire to bring my best to the students' best. But Tom said the same thing. Cliff, quite frankly, you have a lot to learn. Let's grow together. Even though he was eventually going to be Hall of Fame in basketball, he became principal of the year in the state of Wisconsin. He became superintendent state of the year. But he took a humble servant like me. And he said, I want to grow you and shape you to so that after three summers, I was invited to be the activities director at Sauk Prairie and then serve as an elementary principal, community ed director, and then the opportunity to be district administrator. All along the way, Joel, people have take, grabbed my hand and said, you have the energy and the passion but you need to grow and learn so you can truly serve in those positions. I am so grateful for the experiences and the people that have been in my life. And that whole idea of like shoulder tap, like, like people like tapping on the shoulder and, and having these, like, I see in you moments, I see this in you. And like, probably you were having self doubts about this. That like, really, do you see that in me? I, and I think about my own story about Mary Louise Gomez tapping me in the show to be like, Hey, have you ever thought about being a, pro a professor, getting a doctorate? I'm like, absolutely. What? No. <laughs> but the, that those mild, those moments in your life where someone sees in you and then invests in you, like, and it, it goes right into like the purpose of this book here. Yes. And, and it beautifully does. Shall we transition to yeah, then absolutely. why this book? Thank yeah. you. And so my journey has been, I've been given many opportunities, but I've been really fortunate that people have been willing to say to me, Cliff, right now you're growing into these positions, but you need to improve and get better. And at first it was like, oh my goodness, then maybe I shouldn't be doing them. Mm. But I was fortunate that people would say, we want to walk with you and work with you, yeah. but you need to understand where you need to grow and improve. So thus, when I retired, I was working through why was I given the privilege to do this work when I might have fell oh, short? I, I might have missed the mark with serving families. I might have missed the mark with serving children and serving adults. And I had to grow through that self-forgiveness and what happened then, along comes Arthur C. Brooks, who says, we've got this journey of active employment where we get the privilege to have these various jobs, right? Mm -hmm. To be called to work and serve. But then we have a second phase where we can take all that we've learned and all that we had the chance to experience and now give back in unique ways of teaching and love through those experiences. So rather than dwell on what you were not or where you fell short, to be able to say, thank you for these privileges. Thank you, gracious friends, for these relationships. Now I will get a chance to grow forward in the second half of life. And Cindy, my wife, was listening to a podcast and said, Cliff, I think you need to listen to Arthur C. Brooks. <laughs> Yeah, And so then got the books and just 
it, it has been incredible because now in this second phase, first year of COVID, um, it was very quiet. Um, I oh, retired yeah. in uh, June of 2020. And then after that year, I've had the privilege to be an interim superintendent. I've had the privilege to work with uh, student teachers at a university. And I've had the privilege to work with a charter school in their renewal mm -hmm. of their charter. And I, and Tom Andrews taught me this, come in, serve, empower them, help them grow, help them heal, and then send them on their way. This is not about you. This is about serving them, all your experience and giving. And I'm, I'm going to go back. We're, we're cycling back to yeah, yeah. the people. And I, I hope that makes sense. And his book has touched me so much about all those phases and pieces of this is that second half of life to give and grow as a senior servant in a different way. Yeah, I just I, I love hearing these, you know, the experiences that you're talking about post retirement. And it, it yeah. does remind me of of Tom Andrews, where I mean, I remember when he was retired and we uh, we had we didn't have a principal for a little bit. And he came in to short term. And I remember his he met with a, a group of teachers. and He's like, what do you want to get done? Like we can get like, we'll get something that I'm not just going to sit here. Let's get something done. Like, it, cause I'll be gone in six months. So, I guess, yes. so when you get yes. your new principal or even too, when he stepped in, uh, to, uh, for a school district that was hurting with Weston, like when yes. they, and he stepped in and helped out there too. And just, uh, after that uh, awful school shooting, but to hear about these, like these opportunities that you're saying, and it, again, it's not about you, but it's about how can you invest in those, in those other spaces. Like that's, that's incredible. I, I love it. But Joel, I've got to confess that my passion for a period of time was I want to help others, but I want to climb my own mountain as well. Mm. And I have been wonderfully shown that my calling was to prepare pathways. When people growing me would say, you're here to grow coaches. You're here to grow leaders. You're here to love and support families and students. And when people were critical of me falling short and being selfish, they were right. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful for the administrators and leaders and community members and staff who said, we'll walk with you and work with you, but you need to make adjustments. And, um, you know, that temporary stumble and pain yeah. became opportunities to grow and serve where now at this age and stage of life, I'm so grateful that the snippets of giving can still take place. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that kind of, again, falls in line with some of the things in the book with that, that whole idea of that, with that success addict, right. Is like that desire for, you know, for achieving, for doing like, hey, look at, yeah. look at, look at me sort of thing versus, Hey, how do we, I like what you said, prepare pathways for others yeah. uh, to succeed. Uh, that's good. So when you, when you start, and, and I think this book is, is kind of, I mean, or the book or the ideas behind it is kind of built for education. Like if you're, in yeah. the, if you're in education, this is like, this is fuel for your fire. Cause you have like, there's many ways that you can take exactly what is, is what is in this book and apply it towards uh, towards what you're already doing, but to, just maybe to even to shape the mindset. I don't know. Did you kind of feel that when you're reading it too? Thank you for your your wisdom and insight. Yes, you know, just looking at his journey of being a an accomplished musician, right? Mm -hmm. And then even admitting and saying he he felt like his commitment to learning and growth in learning um, was not at the level it should be. But once he found that course, mm -hmm. um, which then goes back to I. I Without sounding selfish, I feel like the book, yes, was written for those of us that have had the privilege to serve in education, but how he attaches it also to the business world, yeah. to um, to being treasured teammates, forever mm -hmm. friends, right? right? Where you're saying we can have critical, crucial conversations because growth and improvement 
allow us to not only grow in the moment, but then when we are attempting to lay our head on our pillow at night and say, I think I need a little bit of rest before yeah. I go out tomorrow, that we reflect with confidence that rest will repurpose us, rejuvenate us. So whatever we've been called to do, but that educational component, because I love too that he talks about leaders are teachers, mm, yes. right? And the very idea that rather than imposing your will or being a persuader, but being a listener, being able to have a conversation that seeks as much um, input as, well, let me give you the wisdom of my multiple years, right? Instead, yeah. please tell me where you're at, how you're feeling, and please take care of yourself. I This, this book has been such a gift to someone like me and keeps giving. Yeah. Nice. So, well, let's, let's, let's share some gifts. All right. So like some things that you, that you did pull out that maybe some like nuggets that we can think about as, as they apply towards teaching. So, uh, did you want to start? Did you have one that you wanted to pull out to start? Uh, my friend, I, I love when you teach, do you mind if you start and I will join you because then I will feel I'm a true teammate. (laughs) Okay. All right. Uh, so, well, the one was I did talk about the already touched on was the success addict. I think that's again with social media and comparison culture, even in education wise, where you look, you know, where people are putting out, um, you know, social media, like, hey, look at my beautiful bulletin board, or look at the activities that my students are doing, or the, this, like, this idea of the more and more that you can incorporate into your thing. I think there's one thing that that's come out is avoiding that comparison culture sort of aspect of it the try to think like well what is your why versus the trying to accumulate uh and and to more simplify right reduce down to what you can what really matters to you but that whole idea about that success addict i think just the comparison culture that does exist especially within in the social media world is something that um I think you got to be careful about it because there's still that fuel there, even though you think like, would, would you really have comparison culture with teachers? But yeah, there's like teacher social media that's out there. I mean, so even thinking like, well, what are you, what are you doing to uh, combat that? Um, but then also too, just the idea of, uh, of purpose. Right. And so uh, I can't remember where it was in the book. I've got, I've got all my, my post-its here, but yeah. um, the idea of that, um, what is I've kind of playing around this idea with like passion versus purpose, like the, the passionate teacher. So we have, we just had graduation, well, not this Saturday, but the past Saturday where you have new teachers and new positions and they're going to go in, you know, just like you're saying with enthusiasm and fire and everything. And they've got all this passion, but that passion is a, like that raging fire at the beginning. And, and like the purpose I think is like the coals that are going to exist that can always, uh, that's always there. Right. That, that keeps that internal fire. And so like getting back into like thinking about, well, what is your purpose? What is your why? And that's, that's something I I think about a lot in like, in in like you're talking about all these different roles you've had. And I've had a number of different roles here Mm -hmm. at the university, but always been like, how can I lead people to love others through teaching? How can I lead people to love others through teaching? Well, whatever the role is, I can still have that purpose, right? And like, I might get fired up about certain programs and things, but all all the time I got my embers where it's on, how can I lead people to love others through teaching? And that's, that goes for why do a podcast like this, right? Lead people to love others through teaching, give them a little exposure to Cliff Thompson. Come on now, there we go. That'll, that can help people uh, on that path. I love how you said lead in love and, those two things is also attracted me in in the many YouTube videos, the one minutes, the two minutes when I first got introduced yeah. um, to the author. I love that he talked about love and happiness. Mm-hmm. And then what that caused me to think about, well, how does he define happiness? Because knowing he's a person of faith, I wondered if he would incorporate where joy fits, right? Mm. Being willing to embrace the struggle at the same level of success. And then back to what you were talking about, the success addiction. um, 
you know, I would label it, it, it just, I was just brought up at a stage of life and in my, in my environment, in the home front, very loving parents, but it was a uh, first one to work, last one to work, um, limited talking and yeah. just, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. So there were a number of things that I had to learn. And I think about how he talks about, well, love is listening, but love is also clarifying with clear, simple language how you and I are communicating right now yeah. and making sure you understand um, it's too easy to, to misunderstand each other, right? So mm -hmm. building on that. Um, chapter eight, make your weakness your strength. Mm. You know, the very, uh, I'm, I'm going to go back to it again. I yeah. feel like the opportunities I'm being led to serve for short periods of time is that growth. And most of the time, growth incorporates some form of healing. And it incorporates somewhere I'm saying, but define what weakness is. It's literally an opportunity. Um, I was an elementary principal in four learning communities. And I can remember uh, um, one of the learning communities, the people greeted me by, so I had three at one time. So I was never in the right place at the same time. And um, it was my first elementary principalship. And I can remember people said, you are a good person. You've been a successful activities director for 24 years in two places, but you have proved nothing about being uh, an elementary leader. Mm -hmm. And boy, they were so honest with me. And by the way, you're not even going to be here all the time, right? <laughs> well, how are you going to figure this out? So I had to humbly figure out, but willingly, well, where, where am I? When I am here, please tell me where the strength is. Mm. When I'm not here, both in written form and spoken word, where, where do I meet your needs and not? And with interacting with children and families as well as staff. So my point, the very idea, my experience was a shortcoming. Mm -hmm. My knowledge base and that was a shortcut. But these people in these environments allowed me for nine tremendous years to grow in elementary leadership so that I could eventually um, be able to serve to, at a capacity through the guidance of the district administrator, et cetera. So looking at the weakness piece, when you talk about strength to strength, actually celebrating, and I didn't do this, Joel, for half of my professional life. I didn't celebrate struggle. Mm -hmm. I did not celebrate the very opportunity of when I welcome struggle and growth, those around me maybe were willing to do that. So my friend, I, this book, it seems like it reminds me of scripture. When I reread a section in scripture, it's like a new message. Yeah. Right. Every time I reread, Something in here, I, I say, um, thank you, Arthur, for the gift of your teaching that just keeps teaching. Yeah. So we actually have done some uh, some some of the, uh, I think I actually might have a podcast episode, but we do have like a uh, article talking about celebrating the struggle. Uh, we're talking about repositioning uh, struggle in mathematics. I mean, one of the standards of mathematical practice is uh, make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. It's basically saying like, hey, get into struggle, productive struggle, right? Because, I mean, you think about all the things that have been worthwhile in our lives when you talk about you had to do a, you did a dissertation. I know I had to do a dissertation or just even like seeing kids like work something out and like they have to work through it or they're in a basketball game where they make a, a, you know, a comeback from double digits and they broke it down into, they're just down by two. Like, there's celebration in those struggle moments where it, it looks dire a little bit at times, but there is like, you, you can't have that, that high without having that low a little bit. And there's going to, and so that's, it's the path in between and how do we, how do we embrace that? And how do we celebrate that? I mean, that's, that's a beautiful thing too. I love the way you say that. Um, I, 
tell people when it's appropriate. I have the gift of experience, but I've never been an expert and I've never been something of the year. I, I just, my friends, you've had Shale and uh, Tom on here who represent that level of excellence and others. I would love to mention all the names of all the people that have grown me in these two environments. So forgive me to anyone who I don't either have the time or the cognitive capacity to be able to do that. But the very idea that your gifts can many times be bringing out the goodness and greatness in others and focusing less on how do I influence or inspire, um, but bring out their best gifts. And when I started to better understand that, I realized all these opportunities are based on that for me. Mm -hmm. um, there are others that have those levels of expertise and levels of excellence, but that I get the privilege to fill roles, be grow with people like you, and then grow forward when those times come in my in that situation at that time. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, no, and that actually ties it right in with it. another one I wanted to bring. It was this idea yeah. about being present, right? Yes. You, you, you talked about all your, you know, the different you know, schools, you're all trying to principal at the same time. And like, you couldn't be at a school having a conversation with a teacher about an issue at that particular school and then thinking about another school at that time. You needed to be at that point in time uh, considering that person and what they're saying versus like be living a distracted life first. And that could be, uh, you know, things that he's talking about distracted about, well, what am I not doing or versus what are other people doing versus no, 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 this is what I'm doing right here and right now. And I had my counselor who, who made this drawing and it, it gets into mathematics again, but it was a circle, which is like you and then uh, time, which is like a line. And then where that circle touches the line, that tangent point, there's only one point it touches that line. And if you're not right there, and that's mm. th that's where you are at, that's also, and he was a Christian counselor, like, you're with God. Because if you're thinking about the future, you know, worried about the future, or regrets in the past, he's not there or there, you know. He's right here, right now, with who you're at. He wants you here, being present. And that just... You know, right? Like the he had, there's a little anecdote in the book about uh, they looked at a flower where the the you know where they're at they're having some dinner and they're like, hey, go come over here, look at this plant. And all these plant had all these flowers closed up. And then at some point in time in the night, they knew like those things were going to pop open. And all of a sudden, they popped open. And it was like it was a moment, and you couldn't be like, well, let me just scroll, let me just check the the NBA game, let's see how the playoff games are going. No, 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 you would have missed it. You would have missed it if you weren't completely present and like, what are we missing if we're not embracing this moment of what are we doing and how are we investing in others that involves being present with them? Mm. I, I cannot thank you enough for that. Um, Cindy and I met our freshman year in college. And so we've been friends for 52 years wow. and we've been married for 45 years. And she has been, that wisdom and gift of presence. When I'm tempted to overwork and not be present and fully invest myself in the moment, when I think that sleep's not important, especially during active employment, she would so wonderfully, so gently, so lovingly say, we need the best of you and the best of you take care okay. um, of yourself. And I, it, I love that he mentions in this book that same thing, that save self-care component, right? That it's not selfish to make sure to be at your best. Yes, you might be strong. Yes, exactly what you said. But the gift of presence requires all those pieces. When I was in Milwaukee, there was a superb English teacher I would say good morning to every morning. And one morning he stopped me and he said, I am not going to respond to you until you stop to listen to my response. And I never forgot that person. I See, I, I have been so fortunate, Joel, yeah. that people have been willing to reset me this imperfect um, servant mm. who just 
continually as people saying your energy, your passion, your desire to give and give, it needs, you need to think about when is it too much? When is it not enough? And when is it seen as sincere, trusted, and it makes the difference that ultimately you're striving for, right? Yeah. You need that feedback. So, um, not only with this incredible individual, but afterwards I would pause. And when I would say, how are you? And he said, I'm ready to tell you and thank you for pausing. Yeah. Dude, and the pause became a part of my vocabulary. There you go. That's amazing. <laughs> I mean, I, well, and, and that makes sense because I saw that later on too. It's, I mean, it's with running into either you or Tom Andrews in the hallway, one, Tom knew my name. I always was impressed. Like he hired me and he hired a bunch of people. And all of a sudden he's like, Hey Joel, how's it going so far? And like, you know, like, Hey, how, <laughs> but then also too, seeing you and having, and, and I think, I think you had a, a lot more pressure on you and, and maybe you didn't know this, but because of your, how much enthusiasm you would have on the day-to-day -day basis. And like, uh, and just seeing that and be like, you know, if somebody didn't know you'd be like, is that real? But then when you, when you do, when you pause and you interact and you're, you are present and hearing and like, you know, having a, you know, Hey, go have a great day. Go teach some good math today. And like, you could see like, Hey, that's genuine. And that is, and that could very quickly, if you're not like living in the moment, like yeah. it, it loses, it's uh, it loses its um, legitimacy, I guess, if, for lack of a better term. Perfect, perfect definition of the reality of trying to be something, but without that feedback, mm. whether it's from our children and that, and here's the beauty of that. Tom taught me to greet students and staff. And he said, Cliff, don't expect them to greet you back. But I will tell you the byproduct of that became when I then played other roles in the district, when they became parents or came back to visit in that, it would say, I remember. And what the children in the elementary schools who I see who are now grown and doing, we loved how you greeted us yeah. and we loved how you said goodbye. Um, and yeah. I said, I love that when I greeted you, you welcomed me by just saying, good morning, Mr. Thompson. But then here was their growth. How are you today? Yeah. In those pieces, Joel, and not, not, so is an instructional leader, a leader in instruction? Yes, but it's also that leader in relationships right. and the staff and the children and the families taught me both. Well, that, and that kind of ties into the, another, th that was a big component uh, of the book too. This, this uh, one, the, the study that he, he reviews on, like, what are some things in life? Hey, if you want a, a good and happy life, one, it's like, don't smoke and don't drink too much. Like, Hey, okay. Got that. <laughs> check, check, take care of your, take care of your body. But then also the, the idea about relationships and yes. those, like, and just how important those relationships are. And you, I mean, and, and you talked about like when you retired, I couldn't imagine retiring and then right in the midst of COVID where it's like, Hey, and now I got some time. I'm going to go to a coffee shop. You can go to a coffee shop. I'm like, right. You can, can go down yeah. to the Eagle, uh, down to the Eagle Inn and, and grab a, a delicious breakfast sandwich, which I miss every Thursday because I would have those with Shane <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Like, you couldn't do all that. So, I mean, just that idea about the importance of relationships and that, and that it's, it's like a skill. Like you even talked about like a building of the, of a skill and like, and, and some of us need some help <laughs> in thinking about if, how do we foster relationships in a genuine, authentic way? Mm -hmm. I love that. The, the privilege of working with student teachers like you is, um, and I'm so grateful for the elementary experience when I was growing in the content and connections, right? Mm. And really encouraging um the very idea when someone might be tempted to say, oh, Cliff, I have a really tough class this year and I'm, I'm struggling because, you know, it's tough to see those behaviors in that every day. And I'd say your gifts are that patience and building those connections so that the learning can flow in. Now, I'm sure that was shared earlier in their careers and mm -hmm. 
you know, they know that, but just that reminder, the gift of the consistency of that care um, component so you can bring that gift of learning. Yeah. Um, when I taught the kindergarten for the two years, um, I felt so fortunate that I was reminded, we visited the homes of our students before the school started. So I had 20 kindergarten visits and 42 seventh and eighth grade visits. My entire month of August yeah. was filled with visits in the home. Those families welcomed me and said, you are the key. We're going to teach you how to braid hair. We're going to teach you to appreciate uh, our special foods in our family. But I will tell you what, our children need to know you're here for them. Mm. And so those home visits um, in the parochial schools, you didn't get the privilege of compensation through monetary means. Yeah. You got it through the gift of time and their connection. So, Joel, you're just reminding me, see, I limited gifts, maximum opportunities to be able to live a life of service and teamwork. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, and I, well, I wonder, like, what advice, I mean, and I think you're, you've done a good job of, of, you know, with your relationships and moving beyond, like, I don't know the little anecdote he had with his uh, son about, is that a real friend or a deal friend? Right. Yes. And, and I really saw that in COVID times where I was interacting with a ton of people on, on zoom like this, like, I mean, we had all sorts of appointments where we're interact, but everything was transactional. We are on this zoom in order for you to provide me with information or me to provide you with something like it was, everything was transactional. And so eventually you just, I, I mean, I was walking the dog and it was like, I felt so lonely because like all these transactional things. I mean, I mean obviously I had family and, and everything, but just like from a, a an employee, you know, cause I, I like, we have a friendly sort of place here in, in the University of Mississippi School of Education. And so we started a, a Zoom uh, and we, uh, a Zoom for, uh, what did I call it? Oh, I call, this is a, a nod to Wisconsin. Fish fry. I call it Friday fish fry. So it was a noontime Zoom where we would just get on and there was like, this is no agenda. This cannot be, hey, we're going to get the little bit. No, no. This is just to, you know, talk about, you know, whatever life, what, what, what hobbies you're taking up with your extra time at, at home and whatever. But let's just get on and no, no transaction in order to just be, be with each other and just have, have some friendship time. But mm -hmm. I don't know, like what, what do you have in your life when, when you think about how did you foster those authentic relationships in all of your uh, time in education? That is such a great question. Um, in one of the recent uh, John Maxwell um, YouTube videos, he talks about a single term that he thinks is a key word right now to living his life in his 70s. And I think he's on his 89th book. It's called Others. Mm. And regardless of age, right, that you have the privilege to walk with others, to personally grow, and to help them grow. And that you have to determine how to build on those relationships. And Cindy and I talked about we were led together and, you know, we, we are so different and yet we are so much more complete now because we were both willing to take those pieces of the others. So she volunteers once a week to go to Bridges Elementary, which became, were you here when Spruce transitioned? Um, I think I was right on that time. Yeah, You were right there. So mm -hmm. anyhow, the very idea that we look at what does it mean to focus on others? And the um, one of the quotes um, that I didn't include in my correspondence to you said, Oprah Winfrey made the comment that once you find something you love and give it to others, and you will make a difference in their lives as well as yours. You know, and I, I, I don't want to simplify that or stay too broad, 
but the very idea that I get to be with you today, Joel, mm. that I get to talk about all the opportunities and not honor the people. I wish I could, but I hope these people feel today how much I love them and appreciate them. But the idea of giving forward right now to others, um, this afternoon, I get to do some grocery shopping for a neighbor. And when we go there, Cindy picks up groceries and I will hold the door and thank the people who work there. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's how we do it. Yeah. And, and you know, that people really know that we mean that. Yeah. Our business and our love for them. Thank you for, you know, and then I'll, I'll ask them, how many people take time to thank you? Well, Cliff, we mean we we wish more, but we want you to know that even one a day, one a week means everything to us. So they even have an appreciation for it. It's not about I need more of. And then they look at who their others are. Mm-hmm. I hope I answered your question for no, you. No, my yeah, no, that's 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 excellent. The um and the other I, I guess that going back to um, some of the other learnings from the book and, and, and it's actually going back to the, the kind of the, I see in you sort of things that I talked about. It was the, um, they were talking about the perspectives on art, the different perspectives on art. And mm. I, I thought that that like where these people that you talk about within your career and even mine too, where someone says the, I see in you, it's like that, that big block of Jade and they see like, Hey, within here, there's a beautiful sculpture. And yeah, there's some things that need to get knocked off. There's some things that need to get, it, we need to take a chip, chip a few things off, but event it's in there we, and we can see it versus the other side of, you know, perspective on art was like, Hey, if you're going to make art, like, what do you see? Like, Oh, an empty canvas. And I need to add to it. I need to, I need to add more to Cliff Thompson to get that. No, no, no. They said, Hey, it's in there. We just need, we just need to, to take off the extra stuff. So that you can be the, the the best version of yourself. And how yeah. do we then now, and, and this is the whole point of the book is like, how do we go out and see like, Hey, how, and th- this is something I've said to some of my te- student teachers. I'm sure you've said something like this too. I don't want you to act like a teacher. I want you to be the teacher you were made to be. Mm. No, I don't want you to act like a leader. I want you to be the leader you were made to be. And so like that, I think that gets at that idea of that, um, kind of that asset based perspective that people had in you or people have had in me. And now how do we get to help them expose it? Basically. I, I love that in the very idea and please correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't he, didn't he also allude to the fact of less can be more. You don't have to worry about abundance of Mm -hmm. creation, but make what you do well done. Right. Mm -hmm. I I love you. You brought the idea. I just wanted to add to it. Yeah, no, no. Well, and that, that goes for, you know, you think about again, going back to educate, like the person that packs their lesson with so much. And so like, I'll have, you know, my, my students are, they do these like mini lessons, like 10 minutes and, you know, have them plan them and execute them. And then we give them feedback. Like there's, they do it to a small group. Um, And, like I'll have them, you know, eventually by the end, they figure out less is more here. If I, if I do less and allow more space for the students to do more within the lessons, it becomes more engaging, more exciting. Like who knows what they're going to say and how do we let incorporate that into where we want to get to and the, and like, Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Right. Like that, that whole idea of this lesson versus, Oh, I got to pack all this technology. I got to do this. I got to do this. And versus like, this, you're doing every the teacher's doing everything, and what are the students doing? Versus, like, how do we create space for the students to do more? Mm. You know, I love that. And when we empower our students to build confidence in teaching at Merrimack, when Tom Andrews came to me and said, You know, Cliff, we're down to 56 students when you came to the district, so that was like 2003. Mm-hmm. When you came to the district in 1992, we had 120-some students. So either close us with dignity or give us a new vision. 
And remember, these people were right. I was not a visionary, instructional elementary leader, but we looked at charter, we looked at place-based and project-based learning, and the very idea, now here's back to pathway, and I didn't mm -hmm. understand it then. <laughs> you will build a pathway and then give it away. So two years later, when it was established and in place, I, I, I knew what was, I hear, I heard the call, right? And it was like, you've built this pathway and now someone is going to take it to another. They have 130 some students now. Awesome. It, it see, they, they took it, Joel. And I'm going to go back to again, today to you, I want to thank the Lord and thank you and thank everyone that has given me the chance to grow and walk and work and serve with them because they are the ones that allow me today. Uh, and Cindy and I have said, we know there's going to come a time um, and we're, we're spacing that out right now. But the very idea that we can give back in a very simple way um, with clear expectations of others first and not expecting anything in return other than we hope that they know we love them and that they bring joy to our lives because we get to, to be with them. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. Well, and, and, the, well, and, and to go back to your, to your story too, like easily. And again, going back to that success addict, you could have been like, Oh, I built this, you know, I built this thing and I want to take it and like, Hey, look at what we're doing here versus like, no, you heard the call. And like, this is the time to what you said, make a pathway and give it away. Like that's a beautiful thing. There you go. Oh, that's great. Well, it's, it's people like you where your greatness and goodness. Um, I had the privilege to work with the present superintendent for seven years as a director of teaching and learning. And his gifts far exceeded mine. And when the district said, you know, you get determined when you want to retire, I said, I'm concerned I might've stayed too long, but what I'm grateful for, we've, our community has passed a referendum. He led us to a second referendum. Um, I, I could go on and on about his gifts and humility and his ability to build confidence. And I'm going to go back to, again, it, it was such an honor to work with him and grow with him in my capacity in leadership, but even more to be a community member and teammate now and see how Salt Prairie embraces as a community learning and love for place. Mm -hmm. I, I just, oh, I could go on and on to say, I'm so grateful for the people in my life that have showed me like Tom, come in and give, and then you've said it. Give it away with joy and look for the next opportunity to walk with people, right? To right. work with people. Yeah. Forgive my repetition, but thank you that we could reteach there for a moment. No, no, that's all, no, it's great. Uh, so, and I'm, I'm going to afraid, so the, I don't know if you had any other learnings you wanted to go, did you have anything else in your notes that you wanted to make sure you we touched on before and, we go to the, uh, I, I think the only, um, um, because he is a person of faith, use things, love people and worship the divine. I, I am grateful right there. Oh, I wrote my, it right right at the friend. bottom. I'm like, Hey, you, I, I like that. I, I, I am so grateful for friendships and examples like yours. That's, <laughs> that's the purpose of sharing that. But yeah, the use things, love people, worship the divine. I, I, yeah, yeah, that, that, that hit me as well. I was like, I like that. That's, that's t-shirt worthy, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. I love that. Yeah. I love that. But to have like a, uh, um, like something that, you know, crystallizes it into, a, you know, in, in, in a big part of the book too, was about embracing the spirituality and, and looking at, you know, and again, that's a, also thinking about beyond yourself and, and lots of different, you know, anecdotes from within scripture and things that, you know, talks about, um, 
the different lessons that could be learned from the book. And you're looking at the, the story of Paul, who was, you know, yeah. an un, unbelievable influence on just the, the world in general, like just with what he was able to do and just like with a boat and a, and a mission, you know? <laughs> oh, I love, I love that. Yeah. Our four granddaughters, seventh grade, fourth grade, second grade, and two, and the two-year-old is new to our family. She's adopted. And the seventh grader will, okay, Grandpa, why, why are you so kind? And I said, sweetheart, Grandpa hasn't always demonstrated that kindness. And when you're a parent, sometimes it looks a little different than being a grandparent. <laughs> but she said something when I made the next point, it's because of grandma. God bless me with your grandma. And she has been my greatest gift, which led to my other greatest gifts. And, and you know, I'm so grateful for her because she said, Grandpa, I believe you. And I said, I'm glad. Yeah, that was good. My friend, I, and that's why when Cindy said, I, I have a podcast for you to listen to. Yeah. We, we are so grateful for those being brought into our lives. And when um, one of her favorites, when he was one of the, uh, the guests, and it was just like, oh, everything he's saying it just yeah. really, really speaks to me. And I said, now, hon, here's the key. Are you feeling what I'm feeling? And she said, yes. So we both, we both talked about how we, it's critical that we keep giving to each other so that that, that growth, we want our relationship to grow, not only in faith, but with, e with each other. Yeah. I mean, yes, there's numbers there, right? 52 years of friendship, 45 years of marriage. But what does those years mean? Just like in teaching, right. when we celebrate years of service, but what what is within those years of service? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I like, I, I mean, and I like that you're not treating each other as frozen in time. Right. And like, it, there's a lot of norms that we have with, when you have engaged in discussions and things and don't freeze each other in time. Same thing for, again, you talk about somebody that you've been with for 52 years and like, it probably could be easy to like, well, that's the way Cliff is. That's the way oh, Cliff, no, no, no. We're going to live and grow together. And like, I mean, that's the kind of relationships that he's talking about that, that those are the sustaining the true marks of a successful life. Uh, there you go. That's, that's a good example right there, Cliff. That's excellent. Thank that's you, something that, for me to shoot that, for. Your words mean so much. And I, now I had asked you, my friend, could you give me an update on your life, your yes. family and yeah. just where you're at? Yeah. So we are uh, going to be celebrating 21 years of marriage coming up in, uh, in June. And I have a, a child at, at, at the university uh, at, at um, Dartmouth out East. He just is, is wrapping up his first year shortly, a uh, freshman in high school, and then a sixth grader who's, uh, yeah. who's getting ready to start off in football and, and lifting and all that stuff. So yeah, it's a, uh, it's an adventure. It's an adventure. And it's like one of those, and then the professionally seen, and this is what, again, what, about the book being a full professor being in a place for so long and having now former students that are coming back for doctor degrees or former students that are now clinical instructors for the my current students that are learning to be teachers or mm -hmm. even talking to former students from wisconsin that are now becoming teachers of teachers or you know or even my uh my colleague uh, who I started at Sock Prairie in, in 2002, uh, Shane Bean, oh. seeing the, the the great things that he's doing within the community and, and our families growing up. And and we still, and I don't know if you know this, we still talk every every Thursday morning. We talk That's on the so phone awesome. when he can get service on his cell phone. Like, Shane, get, get your service together. Anyway. <laughs> he always hits a dead spot coming into town. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, they need a new tower there. So... But wow. I mean, like those are the, just, you know, when you talk about um, blessed and thinking about your path and, and just knowing that there wasn't a plan, I'm sure like you didn't think like, oh, I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm going to start in Milwaukee. I'm going to end up in, in, uh, in Sauk Prairie. Uh, 
having such a long career in education, I'm going to, that's where I'm going to end up in Stockport versus like, Hey, Joel, you're going to end up in Mississippi, <laughs> you know, like yeah. even just never would have thought that from uh, Altoona wow. and Black River Falls, Wisconsin to come down. Congratulations. Here. And thank you, Joel, for the person you are, the leader you are, the teacher you are, the husband and father you are. Um, I, one of the things I was really looking for was just being able to have a conversation with you again. I, I was deeply touched by your your work and our school district and community and equally today. Thank yeah. you. Well, I just want to give you, give you an open space too, is if you had anything else that you wanted to share on the book or even this idea, I have this like little bonus question, but what is the best thing you've learned to help you teach better? So one, actually, no, I do have a question. So what is one thing that like you say, you keep reading, you keep being challenged by the book, what is one thing that you want to do going forward? Or even the, with this conversation, what is one thing you want to do going forward having uh, to do differently now having read the book or reread the book or even having this conversation? Oh, thank you. Um, it It's basically, I'm basically going to repeat the theme to grow and improve in every way. Mm -hmm. And that others feel the sincerity of as long as I've been given another day, another breath. Um, because, you know, Cindy and I smile about this, that that we are 70 years old and, and it's a number, but yeah. that we have good health and that we are able to give. But what what should that giving look like? So to grow and improve through reflection and conversation and be senior servants. And um, also the idea of my example of overworking and just the extreme at times thinking that was the model. Um, I, I've come to realize it was what I thought was the way, but now I encourage as many people as I can very quietly and say, please take care of yourself as you lovingly serve others. So, and I mean, in whatever capacity yeah. they've been called to serve. So I got one more thing for you. And yes. this is, this is a, uh, and I don't know if you, you would remember this, but when I had my, my uh, classroom was right across the hall from the main office and every yeah. morning you would do the announcements and then one time you couldn't do the announcements or as periodically you wouldn't be able to do the announcements. And you yeah. came over and said, Joel, I think, I think you can do it. I think you could do it. And, and uh, so I got tapped to do the announcements uh, periodically and, uh, and remember like how much energy and, you know, obviously if people can hear your voice, like the energy that you would bring to those uh, uh, announcements and like, okay, I gotta, I gotta bring it. And so that was the first time I'd ever had to do anything like that and put anything out into the world. I mean, it was announcements, but, um, but to try to set the stage and give some encouragement uh, on, uh, on the, on the day and like, good morning, Sockbury. Hi, you know, all that sort of thing. And that, and people would be like, Hey, you kind of have a radio voice. And, and I would say that might've been the initial spark for starting a podcast. So there we go. Hey, you, you, there's a legacy for you right there. Wow. I, I cannot thank you enough. And what's so neat about you is your willingness and your, your understanding of what it means to have that privilege, right? That, the energy and the enthusiasm. And again, I had to grow into um, how to use that and when it's appropriate to bring that in abundance, <laughs> to bring that with sensitivity. And um, so I offer that to you that I, uh, I feel so honored that even today, I mean, you, you brought out a little bit of this uh, in, in this sharing but it reminds me there's a respect, right, that requires you to really look at how you do it for clarity, sincerity, and even to a degree, the brevity. So people think, oh, my gosh, he's maybe going to take this too long and too far, right? Yeah. Be clear and sincere. So thank you. <laughs> and you are all of those. Oh, well, thank you very much. And thank you very much for the time today. I appreciate you so much. Uh, it's been an honor, my friend. And so I know you will make it a great day or not because your choice is um, to do that. I, I, will, I will close with this. I hope I honored you. 
I hope I honored our Lord. This is for you. Okay. Yeah. I, I pray. And if I fell short, I ask for your grace and forgiveness, my friend. And I hope God uses this for good. All right. Thank you very much, Cliff. I appreciate Thank you. you. Take great care. Yeah, you too. What a good conversation. I was, <laughs> I, I looked at my watch after it was over and like, oh shoot, I, I took way more time than I, I thought I was going to do it. But it, again, it just went by so quickly and just, it was a joy to have him, to see him again. I haven't seen him in a while, but then also just to, just to, Hey, that's Cliff. <laughs> it was, ex it, it's what I remember from Cliff Thompson, uh, when I was at Sock Prairie high school and just the interactions and just, again, so glad to, that he was willing to take the time to come on the podcast, but then also they get to share it with y'all. So I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. All right. Now, the next thing we want to do is the first edition of the album of the episode. Now, so I had all sorts of different things that I wanted to do. Again, the, in, the idea behind this is that when a teacher shares details about their life and there's things that you identify with, it'd be like, oh, uh, they like music or, oh, they um, enjoy going for hikes or, oh, they're, uh, um, they're into uh, that sports team that... I enjoy uh, following. And so any of the sort of stuff like that, those details, it creates connections between the teacher and the student, and then it becomes easier for the teacher to teach. And so this is just another way of sharing and also a way that I get to share some of the things that I enjoy. And one of the things that I enjoy is music and I've gotten into vinyl records. And one of the first vinyl records that I ever got when I finally got a, a record player was Rod Stewart's Every Picture Tells a Story. It was released in 1971. And again, as I was playing around with like, how is this like thing happened? Because people might just skip over this and whatever. Sure, go ahead. But was I going to go track by track and talk about each individual? No, I, I thought I'd just give some highlights. So again, this was released in 1971 as one of Rolling Stone's top 200 albums of all time. You probably have heard Maggie May, which is on the second, uh, on the B side of the album which is kind of interesting and kind of has this introduction that I didn't quite remember as a kid because I think a lot of people skipped over it or maybe even radio DJs skipped over it to get right into that beginning like intro of, of Maggie Mae. But, um, but this is just, a, a rec again, a record from, cover, from beginning song to end song that I love to listen to. Each side is great. It's not just one side. It's not just a couple songs. It goes from one thing to another. I mean, some of the highlights, the first song, Every Picture Tells a Story, just gets into it right away. Like, spend a long time thinking. And it just, it just, it jams right away. I'm sorry. I apologize. I shouldn't sing. Um, but then there's also some covers like of That's All Right and Amazing Grace, where you know, you have Rod Stewart's gravelly voice singing Amazing Grace and singing, that's all right, mama, that's, all, you know, like that song, like, it's, it's really good. <laughs> it's really good. And, and the songs in between are like, I can hear them in my head where it's like that song that every picture tells a story leads into seems like a long time leads into the that's all right and Amazing Grace. Like, it, it's just a, a flowing, uh, a flowing to the album. To the second side where you have Maggie May and Mandolin win back to back, which again are two tremendous songs. And then it ends with the find a reason to believe. So um, reason to believe is a song that became popular when I was a kid, when Rod Stewart did a MTV unplugged album, uh, well, the show and they made it into an album, but he did reason to believe. And I, I don't, I think that was the first time it was released as a single. I could be wrong. But I remember it was on the radio all the time, and it was a bigger hit then, when I was a kid, than when it came out uh, with the album in nineteen in the seventies. So it's a great album. If you've never heard it, cover to cover or beginning to end, give it a listen. You can find it. On, I'll, I'll put a link to it in the show notes uh, to Spotify if you want to take a listen. But uh, I, I think it's well worth it. And and again, it's one of those albums. It's sold so many back in the day that you can find it in a, usually you can typically find it in a used record store. So it's, uh, if you're a vinyl, if you're getting into vinyl, like I am, uh, you can find it. And that's why it was one of the first albums that I purchased because I knew it was a good one. So 
that's it. That's our first album of the episode. Glad you're, if you're still listening, I appreciate that. And that'll do it for this episode of Amadon Planet. So if you are looking for ways to support Amadon Planet, one, you can subscribe, rate, review, and share this episode, which will allow more people looking for similar content to find it. Uh, in addition, you can subscribe to the Amazon Planet download, which contains teaching resources and updates from Amazon Planet anywhere on AmazonPlanet.com where you see join the email list. You click that, you can um, get access to the Amazon Planet download. It's coming out about once a month, right? So any we put out resources and things on there that we think you might uh, like to help you learn to teach better. In addition, you can also submit a question, comment, or suggestion to the mailbag by sending an email to joel at amadonplanet.com. Uh, I've been using those as a way for content. I mean, so like we had Jeremy Wallace on last time. I mean, that there's a direct line from somebody making a suggestion all the way to getting Jeremiah Sims on. Jeremiah Sims led to his book, The White Educator's Guide to Get Equity, that which led to um, getting introduced to Jeremy and then and we had him on again. And so appreciate any any uh, suggestions, comments, questions, whatever that you send in the mailbag. We love the interaction. In addition, I'm always looking for opportunities to work with those who are looking to lead people to love others through teaching. If you have an event or opportunity to share, you can either send an email to joel at amadonplanet.com or head to amadonplanet.com slash about to fill out the request to call form. All right. And then uh, if you're looking for the show notes, you can go to amadonplanet.com forward slash episode 110 and get access to those and any of the links and stuff that we talked about we'll have the link to the book uh from strength to strength there we'll have the link to the album of the episode and all that good stuff so thank you for spending time on amadon planet thanks to cliff thompson for sharing their time and expertise thanks to matt mifflin for the music in this episode and finally thank you to all of you out there learning to teach better and be the good in the world by investing in the lives of others this world is a better place because you have decided to use the gifts you have been given to serve others thank you for all that you do Peace.